Hey guys, so um, I've been making videos and I wanted to talk about how to increase the amount of money that you're making and networking in your industry. Um, I just had lunch with a friend of mine who makes art. She makes these awesome neon lights. Her name is Anesta Le, A-N-N-E-S-T-A-L-E. And you can look her up at anestale.com. She makes these amazing um, neon light sculptures and then she sells them and they sell anywhere from $400 to $4,000 or more depending on the type of installation that you want. And she's also an artist, so pretty soon she's gonna be like merging her, her different forms of art, and that's gonna make the price of each piece go up. But I was asking her, cause I'm like, if you've seen any of my other videos, I make anywhere from 30 to $150 an hour. And my goal is to make 300 to $500 an hour, or 300 to $500 a day, you know, three to $500 an hour is the goal, you know? But I asked her like, how do you do that? You know, and she's like, Myra, I don't sell a piece, you know, like every day, you know, but I, when I do, it, it's enough money to keep me going. She also has her regular job. She's a graphic designer um, and she creates like, you know, apps and things like that. So she is an all around bomb and she inspires me to be better and to push myself um, to think outside the box. And... I think it's really important to do that because I ask, I help her with her installation. So now I'm part of her team. Yay. Um, and she pays me to come with her on site and then put up her work. And she's like, you know, you can go to other galleries and stuff like that and say, hey, I do installation. So I can put up your pictures. I can put up your artwork, you know, depending on the artwork, because obviously the heavy lifting stuff I don't do, you know, and her stuff is, is lightweight. But you just say like, hey, you know, I, I do installation work. And that's a possibility. I also do photography. So I can always say like, and I also do photography. So if you need somebody to photograph your work, let me know. You know, so I'm going there and I'm, I'm promoting two different things to a group of people that I never thought. And a lot of my friends are artists and they want somebody to photograph their work. And I never thought about that as an option, but that's like the key of networking and talking to people is like they will open your mind to a new thing. And the difference between somebody who succeeds and who makes that additional money who doesn't is a person who actually takes the advice and implements it. And I always do, I tell her, I'm like, I'm like, yes, man. I, you tell me something and I'm like, okay, let's do it. And I mean it and we do it. I don't just say it. You know, if I say it and it doesn't get done, it's because you didn't do it with me. And usually I do it on my own anyway, you know, but it's like, if you're like, Hey, let's do something. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And it doesn't happen. It's because that other person like veered off, you know? Um, so I think it's really important or didn't, didn't follow through. Like somebody kept telling me like, Oh, let's get into real estate together. And then they had like a podcast they wanted to show me and they never did for like a year and a half of them being in my face. And I'm like, can we watch it? Can we watch it? Can we watch it? And they never did. So I went and I did the same exact thing that I had been planning with other groups of people. But I still did what I said that I was gonna do. That's the key, you know? So um, it's like really, really important to follow through and actually do what your mentors or the people that are more successful than you are suggesting and to implement any idea that the universe and God put in your mind because they put it in your mind because they know that you can do it. Not your neighbor, not your mom, not your friend, not your cousin, not that guy down the block, not your girlfriend or boyfriend or partner or whatever or lovers. You. You, 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 and only you. So if you hear a voice in your head saying, hey, do this, as long as it's not telling you to do something illegal or wrong, you know, then do it. What is it going to do? Like... As long as you're not going to lose your job, and that might not even be a bad thing, let's be honest, you know, um, then do it, you know. So now I'm like, I'm really interested because I have a lot of friends that are artists. I've been helping them get gigs and put their work in their in galleries and stuff. So now it's I can go to the gallery owners. I can go to my friends and say, hey, I'm photographing, you know, this stuff. and I, Or I could do your installation, you know, like so when you have a gallery event, I can put it up or go to the galleries and say, hey, if you ever need somebody to put up the pictures or take them down or you know your guy like bails on you at the last minute call me I can also photograph these things um, I can even help you promote the event you know um, and then everyone always asks me they're like how do you do all these things you know how I do all these things I don't say no so when someone says can you help me with something I'm like sure do I know what I'm doing no but I let them guide me and direct me and sometimes I have to google and look things up about like how do you do things but I'm there for that person and I help them and by helping them I've acquired a new skill 
and then they just keep adding up. And then when, we, when somebody else asks me to do something, I have a new skill. Like I used to sell stuff on eBay for myself. And then people were like, can you sell stuff on eBay for me? And I said, yeah. And then I became an eBay seller and it got complicated because of the taxes and keeping track and I didn't understand it, but now I do. And now I do it more like on the side, but now it's, it's a way that I can make money because it's something that I did for myself, you know? And then somebody asked me and I was like, sure. It wasn't like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. It's, it seems complicated, you know? I'm just like, sure. If I have the time and I can do it, sure. You know, um, how did I get my real estate license? <laughs> it's funny. I, <laughs> I was going door to door, business to business, right? I did that for five years. And at the end I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. So I walked into every single business in Jackson Heights and I'm like, hey, my name is Myra. I can help you organize, clean up your office, um, but not clean because I don't physically clean because I'm allergic to dust and I just don't do that. But like I can, I can organize and, and get you, you know, together. Or I'm like, hey, are you guys hiring? Hi, my name is Myra. I'm looking for a job. Are you guys hiring? I did that over and over and over in Spanish and in English because it was a Spanish area and I do speak Spanish. And then this lady who ironically ends up being friends with my mom and we didn't know that until later because she knows my brother and my sister but not me because I don't really hang out with them when they do a lot of like family things because I'm always working. <laughs> um, and she was like, oh, I need somebody. And I was like, I can help you organize. It was a mess um, and she'll admit it. And she was like, sure, come in on Saturday. And then I came in on Saturday and somebody was showing an apartment and I went with them and I was like selling it without realizing that I was selling it. I'm like, this is really nice. This is a great closet. Oh, I would do this and I would do that. And finally the person was like, I'll take it. And I did that twice. I helped the person who was renting the place actually close the deal. You know what I mean? So she was like, you should get your real estate license. I'm like, okay, sure. You know, so she paid me for that job you know, of organizing. She told me to come back on Monday. And then by Friday, she told me, you should get your notary license too. Now, I don't, I wasn't like, oh, okay, like she was, I guess maybe I'm obedient to a degree, because um, sometimes I'm not, <laughs> but she was like, you should get your real estate license. I'm like, okay, so I looked it up. I found out it was like a two week class. I'm like, all right, I'm trying to leave this job. I made some good money with this lady. I could pay for the class. And she said she would pay me, you know, to come after the class and like help her. So I was like, all right, so I was making money and I could go to school and I can get a license. I took the class, I think it was two weeks. It was either two weeks or one week, I can't really remember. Eight hours a day, I think it might have been one week. Um, and then I went and I scheduled the test and I passed. I'm a good test taker, I admit it, it's a skill. Um, and I'm really good at memorizing. Some people aren't, but like, you know, everybody's different, but I feel like if you just do it and you don't like procrastinate, because otherwise if you don't take it right away, you're gonna procrastinate forever. Um, I got my license and that was it. That's how I got my life insurance license. I joined Primaric on Saturday, right? I went in for this brunch. I joined Primaric on Saturday. They're like, there's a class next week. You want to take it? I'm like, sure. They're like, you need your life insurance license to make money. I'm like, okay. I took the class for a week. I scheduled the class two weeks later because it was like a two week class. Like, so two weekends. I joined on a Saturday. The next weekend I took a class. The next weekend I took a class. And then the next weekend I took the test and I passed with like an 83. Like, that's how I do everything. I just do it. I don't even question it. I'm just like, sure. And then she's like, you should get your notary license, lady from the, the from the real estate. I'm like, okay. I looked it up online. I ordered a CD. Um, I watched it. They said that you, you can print out the notary law. I read it. I took the, I scheduled the test right away, like a week after I got everything. And then I passed and I'm a notary and I've been a notary, a real estate um, agent. And now I'm doing life insurance all because somebody said you should do this. And I'm like, okay. I didn't question it. I wasn't like, oh my God, this is hard. I, like those thoughts never crossed my mind. This is hard. I can't do it. I don't even understand how the, like, I can't understand why you would say that to yourself. It just doesn't cross my mind. Like I may say stuff like, oh God, I really don't want to do this. But I said that I was going to do it. And to me, to keep your word is more important than anything because even if I don't work with that person doing that job again, they might hire me for someone else or they might recommend me to somebody else. So the type of work that I do and the quality of work that I do is really important because you never know who that person knows. And maybe we'll have a conversation and they're like, I want to hire you for this again. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it again. But I, you know, it's really not my thing. Like in the long run, I, I don't foresee myself doing this on a permanent basis. But if you know anybody else who's looking for this type of person, like let me know because that's really more of like what I want to do. But I don't mind helping you every now and then because I really like you. I like spending time with you and and then I get permanent clients like that. And then when I when I up my rate and I'm like, you know, this is how much I'm making an hour now, um, they kind of pay it because they like you and they see you growing. And as an entrepreneur, you want to see other people 
prospering and growing and so you will pay them the difference sometimes they can't and then I keep it moving and I suggest somebody else you know or I'll just every so often call that person and say hey you want to meet for lunch because you want to maintain the relationships and I I honestly like everybody that I work with and I want to have lunch with them and see them you know but like the whole point I guess is like just don't give up you know and like try things you may not like it and you may not want to do it ever again like if somebody said hey come work at McDonald's for a day I'd be like sure like I would love to just for the experience but then I'm pretty sure I'd be like yeah I don't want to do this I, I did that for Victoria's Secrets I worked there for one day not even I think it was like two hours and they made me the greeter and I'm like hi welcome to Victoria's Secrets would you like to try our new English lace bra it comes in I forgot but back then I knew I was like blah blah da, da. after like two hours I'm like I don't want to do this and, I, and I, I told them, I was like, I really, I'm not interested in this job. And then I got a job at the Disney store and I worked at Bloomingdale's and I worked at The Gap. And, you know, those things I thought a little bit more interesting. The Gap was really cool because I got to meet Brandy and Harrison Ford because they walked in. And I was only at The Gap for like, I think, three months. Um, but that was a really good one, the one on Madison, uh, 54th and Madison or something like that. Um, always famous people were always walking in, always walking in. Um, but yeah. So, and that was like a while ago, you know, nowadays they don't really, but back then the gap was like the thing. Um, and the Disney store was around, so you can just imagine how long ago that was. But anyway, the whole point is don't say no. You know, you can say no. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I've been doing and what's been working for me. Whenever somebody offers me something, I say yes. Even if I don't have the, I was like, I, I don't have the experience, but if you teach me, I can do it. You know, and, and that's what people want. They want somebody that has that whatever it takes attitude, that I'm willing to learn attitude, that, um, you know, teach me and I'll grow with you kind of attitude. Because everybody wants somebody reliable. And I'm so reliable. Like, even if I'm sick, I'll come in and then I'll let you send me home. But I'm reliable. If I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Usually I'm on time, but lately, the last two years, I've been late a lot. And I'll be honest, but it's usually 15 to 30 minutes, never more than that. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes I'm super early and I'm on time, but like, and I used to always be like super early and on time when it came to work, not really hanging out with friends and stuff, I'll be honest. But now it's the opposite. Now I'm like on time with my friends and sometimes I'm running late, but that's because I'm driving and I get stuck in traffic or I can't find parking or something like that. So, you know, like whatever. Um, but I'm honest, you know, like today I met my friend and I was five minutes away and then all of a sudden, like, um, there was no parking. So I ended up being like 10 minutes late or like I was supposed to be there at 11 and then I went on the BQE and I wasn't supposed to go on the BQE. And because the BQE had so much traffic, I was like 20 minutes delayed. But then I took the side road and then I was like, hey, I'm gonna be there in five minutes. And then I couldn't find parking, you know? So like stuff like that, just so you know. But reliability is key. My clients always come back because they, they say like, oh, I booked somebody and they didn't even show up. I'm like, who does that? Like, how do you, who, does that like how irresponsible I mean, even if you have a family emergency you text them and you say hey I can't make it I have a family emergency something you don't just like not show up my clients would never if I don't show up I'm in the hospital or I'm dead seriously that's it that's the only reason you know that's it and they know that so that's really important is to be reliable that's basically all I have to share with you guys because I feel I've made a bunch of videos in a row like I've been talking forever and I'm actually really hungry and I want to eat so I'll talk to you later. Bye.